All right, so this will be our last video on introductory analysis of our landforms. Uh, in this case, we're going to now map the drainage patterns for our landform. Uh, we can do that uh, with a plugin called Mosquito. Uh, we're just going to use one of these components called the flow. Um, so the best way to do this is to actually <clears throat> go back to the existing landform where it's a solid uh, surface and use that one. Um, it, it's not going to be able to actually map out um, those drainage patterns on something like this. There's other plugins or if you really wanted to investigate how that would function with drainage um, where you can do that for, but for again, this kind of introductory um, tutorial on drainage lines, we'll just stick with our single surface here. Um, but we can superimpose these drainage lines on this. It'll still give the appearance that it's uh, flowing on this, maybe not through all the kind of crevices, but it'll still give us our general idea for that. Um, the other thing to be aware of with these surfaces, though, is that the more detailed it is, the more it's going to give you um, drainage lines that probably aren't as accurate or depicted the way you want it to be. You can see looking at this that there's a lot of kind of bumps and ridges and that will uh, affect your drainage line. So it's good in this case to actually really simplify our surface so that's not looking at as many points to create the surface. So right now it's at a pretty high level of 45. I'm going to drop that down to 15. You can see that it really kind of smooth it, smooths it out. It keeps it a little more simple. This will give us a much better result in our drainage lines. And you'll see the difference once I start to get the flow component working. So with this flow component, again, it's a plugin that you can download from Food for Rhino. Um, you'll plug it into your surface. The next thing it needs is uh, points. And these are basically going to act as your simulated uh, raindrops that fall on your surface. Um, we don't want to use the points that actually make this up because you can see that they're kind of floating above it. So we actually just want to go ahead and create a new set of points. So I'm going to go to surface and divide the surface into a grid of points. It doesn't have to be really detailed. Um, I will try to kind of keep it like a grid. So I'll do something like 15 and put those in both directions. If you want to keep it square, you can always give this u value an expression of x times 2. Right, I mean, even that seems a little too detailed. So I'm going to drop that back a little more to like 10 by 20. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and flatten these points, drag that into here. The next thing you need to do is set your resolution, your calculation. The resolution basically defines how uh, smooth your drainage lines are going to be. The lower the value, the more they're going to look like squiggly lines versus the higher value will kind of give a better uh, kind of line. And then the calculation determines how long these drainage lines are. So they can be short or they can be long. Generally, you want to give them a value until they stop moving where they kind of essentially find that low point or that terminus. So I'm just going to create a number slider between 0 and 50. Again, I'll start off low just to show you what it looks like. So something like 5 with a calculation of, again, kind of 0 to 50 as well. So we'll show you what it looks like with just these low values. And like I said, they kind of get really squiggly as they get towards the end. But if I increase that, they become more refined. Um, essentially, they're just very detailed uh, curves, so that's why we have to increase our calculation along with that. So this, you can start to see that this is what actually creates the length of these points. And you can see just how they're responding to the surface. 
And again, I want to show you um, what happens when we have a very detailed surface uh, like we did before. If I bring that back up to 45, you'll see that it really does start to kind of get caught up in all those nooks and crannies of your surface and doesn't really give us the outcome that it should or what we want. So that's why I try to keep it low. Let's even see what happens if I do something like a 12 instead of that 15. Now this starts to look a little bit more like a continuous surface. And again, if I kind of continue to alter those, we get more of a complete kind of drainage area, which gets kind of interesting. I can always even increase my elevations to match that kind of stripped surface. So let's actually turn this off so it almost looks again like it's draining on this. And that's really what we want to achieve. So if that gets increased, we can kind of start to see that it still gives that um, illusion on how it works. And that's generally how you want it to work um, and get perceived as. Um, it should be noted too that this really only works with surfaces. Uh, it's not going to work with a mesh. You can obviously drape a surface over the mesh to get that <clears throat> result and you could always uh, simplify it from there. But this specifically works with surfaces. There are plugins, again, that use the mesh and I sometimes like the results a little bit better from that because it'll actually follow hard edges and corners versus this kind of takes a more general uh, flow line approach. So, I mean, this really kind of gives us visually um, what we want in terms of our drainage lines, but we can always um, edit it a little bit more to give us a little more kind of dynamic visualization to this. So one of the first things that you can start to do is give it some color so that maybe it kind of fades from a lighter tone to the darker tone of the start to the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my curves, I'm going to shatter them. You'll see that it's asking for the curve and it's also asking for some parameters. So in order to get those parameters, we want to divide our curve into segments. So I'm going to start off with something around 15. So now I'll get, um, as you can see, 15 segments and so 16 points for each one of those lines. Um, I'm also going to want to go ahead and graph this so that the data trees match up. So you can see this is a dashed one, so we want to, we know that we need to kind of parse that as well. Um, I can turn this off because, again, the only thing we really want is uh, these T values, which I want to actually make sure I plug in the right one. So there's the right, there's the parameters from this, and that's how we get that. Uh, just to go back to here, if you want to even, in, like, change the density of your flows. You can always kind of do something like this to get a more kind of um, much more dense set of lines. It looks pretty cool when it starts to get pretty heavy with curves. So I'm just going to go ahead and bump that up to 15. That starts to look pretty interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off since now I've got them there again. Look I'm the same exact, they're just shattered now. I'm going to see if I can correct some of that by increasing my resolution some. All right, so this will kind of make those a little less squiggly. Can then increase their length a little bit more. Maybe increase this to 100 to give me a little more wiggle room. That way they're all kind of falling. They eventually meet the endpoints. Right. And again, it's still getting shattered into the same number of curves. It's just those spans are going to be um, a little bit longer. And you'll see just how that might affect the outcome. So now I've got my shattered curves. So now I want to actually color each one of those uh, shattered segments. And we really don't need to uh, do a whole lot from this. We really are just going to use these kind of uh, values that are coming out of here to create our color gradient. So I'm going to go ahead and go to parameters and pick my color gradient. 
And again, it needs values. We're gonna basically create our own kind of separate set of information from that. So let me go to math, or sorry, uh, sets, and create a range of values. And I, it really doesn't matter, it's just gonna go from zero to one. The range of values is gonna have 15 steps. So again, this is giving me 16 set of numbers going from zero to one. I like this because you can see that our limits are already defaulted to zero to one, so I don't have to even change anything else from there. So basically, each one of these segments, 0, 0 0.07, 0 0.13, are basically going to correspond with each one of those segments. I generally like to show my drainage lines more within the blue hue, since it is supposed to be water, so it doesn't have to be perfectly uh, blue, but you can do whatever you want. Um, like I said, I kind of want it to fade from uh, dark blue to maybe a light, maybe even white. Maybe there's just a hint of blue in it. So basically this is the color gradient that you're going to see on these curves. This is how you essentially turn a curve into a color gradient uh, by shattering it and basically just coloring those segments. So now I can take these, go to my display, custom preview, I'll plug this into there, I can turn this off. Now I can just go ahead and plug that into there. And now you can start to see that they start to fade from the light to the darker uh, segments. I don't think we have to graft it. I'll just double check. Yeah, so now it's basically just keeps them all blue. So I do want to just ungraft it that way. Um, so if you do them at a lower resolution, maybe a little bit shorter too. You might get a little bit of a better representation of it. Um, it's really kind of up to you to just um, alter these in order to get that kind of result. Um, and what's kind of cool with this is that you could actually, since the calc curve here is what's affecting the length, you can almost start to use this to kind of simulate how water um, moves through the site. So I'll just zoom in a little bit here and just start to drag it and you can start to see how it begins to kind of go from those short segments to the longer segments that way. And I'm going to do one more thing for you. So again, maybe I want to even uh, visualize the actual kind of endpoint or this water kind of uh, trickling throughout the landform. So I'm going to go ahead and go to this curve. It's turned off, but I'm going to assign it a sphere. So this is going to simulate the end of our curves. And so the radius, I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. The reason it's probably red is because maybe one of these drainage lines is just um, never really kind of fell on this, so it might just not have a drainage line, but it looks fine still. And then I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to give this its own color too. So I can create a color swatch, go to display, custom preview, and turn that off. And we'll again give these a blue hue as well. Just something maybe even darker so that they pop a little bit better, or at least appear um, larger. So, so we can see that they're pretty much already at their end. So if I were to It's interesting, did I? Oh, so what I actually want to do is go to curve, point on curve. And this is basically going to simulate. So there's the start of the curves. Here's the end of the curves. That's actually where I want it. And that's probably why I was reading red. So I'm going to turn that off now. So now we can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to make these again 
a little bit smaller. They don't have to be so uh, bold in this. <clears throat> so what's cool is if I just start to mess with this integer, it starts to affect and show as I slide it how the water moves through the space. And this is what you can start to do to create that simulation. You can actually start to animate these sliders to make a video of the kind of simulation. I won't show it in here. I'll show this in maybe some other videos. But if you're ever interested, it's really simple to create animations of these kind of movements. All you have to do is take these sliders, right click, and go to animate. And it's essentially going to, with each one of these intervals of your slider, it's going to create a uh, screenshot. And so basically it creates um, a series of bunch of um, some images. And then you can take all those images and put them in some type of movie maker and it'll create that animation. So you can set uh, the resolution, the frame count, where you're going to save all these. It's probably good to put them in a folder instead of just on your desktop because then it's going to create like a hundred images. Um, so that's always a good thing to kind of start to explore and have fun with. Like I said, it's you probably want to make it so that they eventually all make it to their end. It gets really fun when you start to use some of the physics engines to show how they would start to fall through some of these little uh, crevices as well. But for the purpose of this, it starts to get uh, the outcome we're looking for. Um, so yeah, like I said, you're really just running this on a simplified surface. But by turning that off, it gives you this illusion that it's running on this type of surface.